Kahalayim la Yahawa, Bahasham Yahawa Shai, Bahasham Racha Kodash, the Bo Allah to the Apostles and Elders, a great millstone that rule well and labor in the word and doctrine. Shalom, mean peace, may that be unto the elect of the nation of Israel. <coughs> Brother Masha, Ben Yamyan, here with Azan Ben Yamyan. Gonna go into a couple of articles on the MLTB. Now, some gradualism from a month back, now, some from current times, dealing with livestock and various, you know, again, gradualism. And we're going to touch on the main point, which is, of course, the human implementation thereof. The first article titles is Millions of Cat Owners Face Being Forced to Haragma Cats Under New Law. And this is from 10th of January 2023, the year of Lord willing, the year of all prophecies coming to pass, hopefully. The hopeful year of all prophecies coming to pass. So the title is Millions of Cat Owners Face being forced to haragma cats under new law. It says pet ownership soared during C19 Okdong, and it is estimated that a quarter of feline populations are haragmed. Okay, it says millions, it's basically saying the same thing millions of cat owners could be forced to haragma their pets as a part of new legal requirement expected to be approved by parliament. The proposed measures are part of a renewed effort to further raise the UK's animal wel welfare standards, which, call me stupid, but sticking a haragma inside a cat you know, doesn't help the, the welfare of them. You know, in fact, do you mind pulling a righteous man hath care for his beast? Book of Proverbs 12 and 10. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It's book of Proverbs chapter 12, verse 10. A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast, by his pets, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. So if you really regard the life of your beast, of your pet, now you're not going to put a haragma inside them, man. Now that's going to cause discomfort, could lead to health problems down the line. And it's just devilish, truly. As well as unnatural. And right. You know, the animals ain't really stupid. They can, you know, find their way home and things like that. Right. You know, to have that inserted into them. It's wicked, really. Right, the animals are more so in their nature than, than humans more time now. You know, they're doing their role. The one thing that they've lost is the fear of man. You know, but that'll be coming back in the kingdom. Now you're not gonna you're not gonna have one one cat brick you have fucking pigeons. You know, when you go city centre, them pigeons are strutting around like they own what the fuck? You're a pigeon, man. Even the pigeons are out of order. That's a title. Because there's pet ownership saw during C nineteen Ockdown. And it is estimated that 2.6 million cats are not haragman. That is a quarter of the feline population. Allegedly. You know, how who's going around counting? You know, what's that? Six times four. 2.4 plus four. No, plus eight. 2.4 plus eight. 10.4, if my maths is correct. Cats. 10.4 million. You, know, you don't even know that. But again, that's the pride of E thinking he can count up every single animal here, every single animal there. He wants to play God. Now, he wants to have them stats like this is fucking GTA. It says, Haragma involves the insertion of a haragma generally around the size of a grain of rice under the skin. And that's what they've always pushed out. You know, that grain of rice, grain of rice, grain of rice. You hear that a lot. And the first time that was in a man was in 1998. All right, so roughly 24, 25 years ago now. It says, when an animal is found, scanning the haragma, which has a unique serial number, you know, which I would go back to the barcode, you know, the number of the B. Has a unique serial number means the registered owner can be identified on a database and the pet can quickly be reunited with them. It says owners are likely to face the same penalties as dog owners if they break the law. If local authorities discover a dog without a haragma, owners will have to fit one within 21 days or be fined up to £500. Imagine that, five bills, you know, for not putting the haragma in your cat. You know, we don't need to go into all of this, but you can see, you know, so a month back, they're passing, passing this legislation talking about how they need to to be haragmed. You know, it's steady, and it might not seem major, you know, but to us who have the eye self and have a prophetic eye to see, you know, we can see what route this is going in. That one. Right, so now getting into this, moving from that gradualism with the cats to man, men. It says, from progress to bands, how close are human haragmas? Or haragma implants. So there's a lot has happened in the past 12 months regarding human haragma implants. Here's your roundup of recent developments. You know, and we know that because we've been we've been looking at that. 
There's a headline from The Hill, January 2023, proclaimed human haragma implant take center stage. Now, I think I've gone through this one. I can go through it again. It says, the novelty of replacing one's home key with a mic, ooh, a microphone, <laughs> a microphone chip, no fish, implant is gaining worldwide interest. But there's another more compelling story under the surface. Why is this technology, an integrated circuit the size of a grain of, see, they're pushing that again, the size of a grain of rice, reviled by some and celebrated by some self-proclaimed human cyborgs. You know, and we can explain why it's why it's reviled by us. You know, so we'll go into a couple of scriptures there. Is it Revelation chapter 13, verse 16? Mm -hmm. And he, that like Esau Edom, causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a karagma in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Come. Here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, his number is six hundred three score and six. And I was talking about E. Yeah, it doesn't mean a singular man, just like it talks about the man of sin in Second Thessalonians chapter two. It don't mean a singular man, you know, the Antichrist. It's talking about a people group. Okay. That's right. So that's why we revile it. You know, that's why we're against it. You know, also it talks about the Devices of Satan. And although that means you know, mental devices, we also can't be ignorant of his physical devices, specifically his physical device, which is the C to the H to the I to the P. All right, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11 it says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we're not ignorant of his devices. Go into this word devices, it's the word noema. It says, oh, wrong word there. The word for devices. No, Emma, we'll listen to the group number three. Strong's G, 3540. Naima. Naima. A mental perception, thought, and evil purpose, that which thinks the mind, thoughts, or purposes. In KJV, King James Version, it's mind four times, device once, and thought once. You know, we can see he's into gradualism. You know, he's into pushing out. Right, this is what I'm doing with... He thinks if he, if he puts it in animals... You know, everyone's going to become more accustomed. Oh, my cat's got it. No, my cat's not dead. This is that. And it's going to be you know, forward is, forwarding his agenda in the earth, you know, which is what he's about. Form of conditioning as well. That's it. That's it, yeah. He'll do that. He'll give you fucking predictive programming. You know, he'll tell you about this shit in Hollywood. And he tells you about this shit in um, Black Mirror. You know, different films, different series. Now about this, it'll show you the goods, it'll show you the potential harms, you know, because he has to play that balance. He has to give more time, again, in marketing, is what you do. You address well, what could be a customer's concern. All right, so I've got a, a USB cable, for example. Right, what could be the concern? Right, well, will it fuck up my phone? No, it's compatible. So you address what the concern may be, and you say how it's fine. You know, well, is it is it going to fit? Yeah, it's a perfect compact. Is it portable? Yeah, it is. So you put all that in the description. So when he's writing these articles, by the time you'll notice, he'll tell you, right, this could be a, seen as a negative, but this is why it's good. Or this could seem bad, but this is why it's actually a benefit. But that's the devil. Revelation 13 and 11. It reads, And I beheld another beast coming out of, up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. All right, so you know Esau, he speaks. You know he'll he'll play both sides, all right, and say, you know this this is a, a good. He'll pitch this idea as mm -hmm. if it's a brilliant mm -hmm. idea, all right, and bring out the pros, but he'll also, you know, bring out the cons too. Okay. And he'll also say, oh, you know, uh, we're not looking to have this, you know, take place this year or next year or whatever the time frame may be but you know he, he wants to ultimately have that you know set in action okay, and that other beast in context would be Babylon the Great right the 11th horn Daniel's prophecy talks about the fourth <clears throat> excuse me the fourth beast talks about 10 horns which would be the EU and the 11th horn that came up that would be Babylon the Great which then becomes that great whore <clears throat> which reigneth over the kings of the earth Right, the two horns as a lamb would go into the Democrats and Republicans as of today. 
In ancient Roman times, that would be the plebeians and patricians. So he's known for always playing two sides, right? Two wings of the same bird, two horns of the same devil, right? And he spake like a dragon. He's come with that draconian, draconian measures, right? He speaks like a dragon. Why? Because he's that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, right? I know I've hit this already, so we'll just pick out certain points. Um, da -da 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 -da. Arguably, William Shakespeare's Hamlets offers the most elegant explanation. Nothing is neither good nor bad, but thinking makes it so. Right, that is completely off. You know, if yeah, if you're a fucking empty vessel, you just go wherever. Like these people in the world, but we're aware. We have a metric of morality, which is the scripture, so we know it to be good for what for prophetic and bad to take it. You know, so it's neither good nor bad. It's the Lord's chip, but we know it's bad to take it. But it's good for prophecy. And it's good because our, it, when it when it gets pushed out, our salvation's nearer. Says how would it? However, it would be prudent to tell Prince Hamlet that not all haragmas are designed alike, and understanding the oh yeah, so they're pushing about how how much better this is. You're gonna have competition. You know, naturally in business, you're gonna have competition rivals, but they're all gonna be pushing out the same agenda. You know, they're all gonna be working together, which is what, which is which is what Captain Cesaria conspiracy, right? Breathing together. Da, 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 da. It says the article goes on to provide an update of many advances and concerns. I think that's meant to say advantages. Advantages and concerns in the practice. Oh no, maybe advances. Of inserting the charagmas into humans. And this blog is referenced several times. Uh, da, 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 da. What, it says, why do I say this in confidence? Because blogs on this topic of charagmas still receive very high, pay, high page views and lots of interest from global readers. And then he gives some. Because everyone's got their eyes on this. You know, it's, it's either a cool thing to them or they're apprehensive or just generally interested or they're going into it prophetically. You know, Elder Apostle Tower was recently saying as well, a lot of them Bible Belt E looking people are Jake and they've got it on point. Some of them could be E, fair enough, but that's jokes that E's got it and huge groups haven't got it. You know, Wi Fi, you can't get this. You know, who else can't get it? Hardly anyone. Sakari can get it. You know, they, they push it sometimes. Believers of, believers of the way, you can't get it. No, no, radical ratters on him. You know, a lot... They, yeah, when Deacon had a debate with my man. Oh, ratters yeah, on the, yeah, the head yeah. of that. Yeah. Um, as as I've heard it, you know, which is a hearing from a hearing from a hearing from a hearing. So that, just take it with a grain of salt. But allegedly, according to Elder Apostle Taha, Deacon Hakar of Sakari told him that General Johanna of the ISUPK said, yeah, if it comes out, I'll take it, and you'll take it too, because your kids have got to eat. You know, and that, what's that? That's um, seeking to save your life, you know, which you'll end up losing it for. Let's pull that scripture. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 16, and verse 25. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Okay. So you trying to you know, go around and save yourself kindly throughout this Jacob's trouble, throughout World War Three, so on and so forth, you know, you're just going to end up dying, truly. Okay. Do I have any more scriptures on this? Can't. There's a, you know, there's a penalty. All right, if you take, take this karagma, all right? Talk to our people, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, alongside these speckled birds, all right? Because you're the children of Israel. So this is Revelation chapter 14 and verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his karagma in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yahweh, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Mm -hmm. Righteous anger. That's right. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. For they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the karagma of his name. Okay. So, there's no repenting if you take that. All right. And you're completely doomed. You can't, you know, if you get it surgically removed either way. All right. You just sealed your fate and you basically said that Esau Edom, he's your God. Your perpetual master. And that that's, proves how important it is to get this because it's not just, man will say, oh, yeah, well, cuttings in your flesh is sin anyway. Yeah, but you can repent from that. 
A man have got cuttings in their flesh, they've got tattoos, so they've repented of that. You know, you're not going to get a, how does it say, tormented with fire and brimstone for getting a tattoo and then repenting. You know, but if you get this, you can try and repent. You know, there's curtains for you. So you need to, you need to, you groups need to get this right. You know, if you add or take away from the word, especially prophecy, what happens? You'll get taken out of the book of life in the Holy See. You'll have no part in Jerusalem as a people. You know, you'll be cut off from, from Israel until you come back in the kingdom. So it's so important to get this one right. This is the most, you know, important, you know, prophecy right now. On Absolutely. The table. Yeah, because before World War Three can fully take place, mm -hmm. this has to be mandated first, mm -hmm. you know. I'll get one more scripture unless you've got, got Revelation 14 and 12. It says, here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of the Most High and the faith of Yahweh Shai. Okay, so that's what it's about. Keeping the, keeping the commandments and keeping the faith. That's the only way to escape. The said perils, how it's talked about in Ezra's. And I think we've got one more scripture coming up. I can't. Uh... Yeah, this is the uh, book of Psalms, chapter 12, verse 8. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. All right? That's why you know it's Esau Eden pushing forth this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's how you know who's ruling the world. Why right, there's no fucking Arabs pushing this up? Just like they didn't, they weren't pushing out the Haraks, they weren't pushing out the Ogdons. Now it shows who's in control. Right. So call it there. Yeah. Okay. So double honesty, apostles and elders, a great millstone that rule well, labouring the word in doctrine. Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. All praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rukha Kodash. Shalom. Shalom.